And come on and give him some glory. Come on and give him some glory. Oh, now do me one last favor and I'll leave you alone. I dare you just start smiling. Come on. I don't care if you're missing teeth. I don't care what you're going through. Just look at somebody and start smiling. And if you see them smiling, say what you smiling at. Tell them because I'm smiling because I win. And the devil lose. Come on. Tell them I won again. We got to hurry up and get out of here. Smile at me and say I'm smiling because I won again. He thought he beat my marriage. He thought he whooped my children. But when the end came, I still came up. Come on, wave your hand. Give God a wave, praise. With my hands lifted up. Just real quick. This ain't on the, on the menu. And my mouth filled with praise. With a heart of thanksgiving. I'll bless thee, O oh Lord. Can y'all just say that? With my hands lifted up And my mouth filled with praise With the heart of thanksgiving I bless thee Come on, y'all got it? Come on, open up your mouth and say With my hands lifted up Thanksgiving, I will, I bless the old. Come on, open up your mouth with my hands lifted up, and my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanks. Come on, one last time, say with my hands lifted up, and my mouth filled with praise, the heart of thanksgiving, I will, I bless the Lord, I bless, I bless. And say, I bless you. Give God the 
higher praise, acknowledging in my way, let all the people say, Ale, Ale, Hallelujah, Ale, 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 He deserves it. 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 He deserves
singers a great hand. Come on, lift your hands and say hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. We, we want to say happy 4th of July to you, but most of all, just a good Sunday morning. Anybody know God is yet good? Come on, can you encourage somebody and say, neighbor, God is yet good. Amen. Listen, as we move forward, and we promise we want to move speedily to uh, get you, we thank God. Look at somebody and say, God is a good God. We celebrate God because even on this holiday in the secular arena, in the worldly arena, amen, we have not forsaken the assembly of the righteous, amen. We have come together, is what I'm saying, on this Sunday morning to give God praise, and so we thank God. Two things we want to do very quickly, and then we'll move, amen. Evangelist Pamela Porch is with us again today. Come on, say amen. Cut this up some, Alex. She is a, she's a survivor, and she is one of us, and we have prayed with her, and as she moves her way back into a full recovery, one of, the, one of the jobs we have is getting her back on the mic a little bit to just say hello. And so what I want her to do is come and just say good morning to us and, and test out her lungs and see how she feels. Come on, let's say amen for evangelist Pamela Porch as she comes to greet us this morning. Praise the Lord, saints. It is the blessing of the Lord that I'm standing here this morning. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a... Yay! The humble shall hear and be great. Oh! 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 oh.
blessed and highly favored. Not only did he save me from cancer the first time, he let me find my own tumor. I told them where it was. Hallelujah. And then the second time, I was putting on my pajamas, and I saw something that didn't look normal. I started typing in the portal. You know, now you don't have to wait to see the doctor. You start typing in the portal. He typed me right back and said, get to the surgeon right away. By the time I got to the surgeon, hallelujah, won't God show you something? Hey! Stage zero, that's what they said. It's too early for us to detect. But they said, you're going to have to have a mastectomy. I was a little sad about that because I had the girls all my life. <laughs> The ladies know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I said to the surgeon, it's all right. It's all right. God's got me. If it wasn't for Danielle and Geraldine, I'm going to tell you right now. Don't know what I would have done. But I said, take them both. I said, because I don't want to be back here in your office. I said, this is the last time I'm going to see you, Dr. Kruger. Hallelujah. She said to me, you're a walking and talking miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had an infection of the blood. And so that means bad things are going to happen. Every time they came in, they were like, what's going on with her? I was exercising in the bed. Ah! <laughs> they had to put an alarm on my bed because I was getting up in the middle of the night. Hey, yeah, yeah. I'm done. I'm done. I know he's coming to get me. I just want to say St. James. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your cards. I'm just saying thank you, not only to you, but to him who is able to keep me from falling. <laughs> hey. Come on, y'all give evangelist Pamela Porch a great hand. Listen, she is a walking miracle among us, and half the story has not been told. There was a point in time that one day, amen, we saw her, I think it was on a Mother's Day or one of those days, we sat up at the house and we had a good conversation and laughed. And by the next morning, they found that she was almost unresponsive. Amen. Just that quick, over 24 hours, she went from sitting and talking and laughing to being in the, in the middle of the emergency room under some serious care. They went as far to tell us that if they had not brought her when they brought her, she wouldn't be here today. So don't you tell me what God won't do. I serve a God that is able. I'm preaching a short version today. I ain't going over time. He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ask or think. I want to do one other thing very quickly. Amen. We have a guest with us and... Uh, Sometimes it's unusual, but you know when people are really saved and love the Lord, amen, they may have come in town for the holiday or something else. And, uh, you know, most of us, our, our, our town guests keep us at home. I've gotten calls so many times, Reverend, I can't make it. I got guests in from out of town. I ain't going to be able to make it today. Amen. And uh, y'all should do like I do. Uh, here's some cereal and milk. Amen. And some stuff in the refrigerator. When I get back from church, if you ain't ate breakfast, we'll feed you or something. But I'm going to church, and when I come back, amen. But this is one of those guests who has decided. He's all the way from Alabama, Arkansas, Alabama. Alabama, I'm just meeting him. Reverend Stacy Jackson. I want him to come. He's with Latoya Thomas and her family. Come on, y'all give our guests a great hand. He's going to come and say good morning to us and introduce himself. Come on, St. James. Y'all do better than that for a guest. Especially out of town guests, amen. 
Good morning. Uh, no, 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 no. He didn't gave me the podium, so I'm going to treat you like I'm at home. I think I am at home uh, because it says that where two or three are gathered, there I am also. This is the Lord's house, so we're going to act like we're in the Lord's house. Come on. Good morning. Good morning, St. James. I, I think you can do better than that. The Lord brought us from a mighty long way. He brought us through COVID. He's, he healed the evangelists here. We ought to be thankful for that. We, woke, we went to bed last night and we weren't promised to wake up this morning. We ought to shout. He cloaked us in our right mind and gave us a moniker of our right mind. We ought to shout for that. We ought to be thankful. I'm not going to be before you long. My pastor always told me, he says, well, Stacy, when the preacher gives you the opportunity to get up, you do what he asks you to, and then you go sit down. So I'll say this, good morning, uh, on behalf of my pastor, Reverend Carlton Phillips from the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church in Anniston, Alabama, uh, to the angel of this house, uh, Pastor Pitts, I greatly appreciate you giving me the opportunity to stand before your congregation. Again, thank you, God bless you, and keep you is my prayer. So you told me to tell you who I was here with. I am actually here with uh, my mother, uh, Latina Thomas, my grandfather, uh, my grandmother, my aunt, and uh, my uh, godmother-in-law. So uh, I just wanted to give them acknowledgement. And the reason for that is uh, ministry is a tiresome thing. And without the support system, it is extremely difficult to push through. It sounds like that's the first lady right there. So she knows better than anybody that it is what it is. Amen. God bless you and keep you. Y'all give him a great hand. Listen, let's get ready to worship the Lord without giving somebody say praise the Lord. Come on, repeat it after me. I give because I have. I have because I give. And for that reason, I'm never, ever without. Now, your attendance has been great today. Amen. I hope you didn't spend all of God's tithes at the meat house. I hope, I hope God's tithes is not marinating in the refrigerator or either laying prostrate across the grill. Amen. Or in the refrigerating, chilling. Or sitting on the bar unopened. Amen. Amen. I pray that you did not spend God's tithes. Amen. Preparing for today. But amen. Listen, when you give unto God, he will give back to you. Press down. Shaking together and running over. And we thank God. All the rest of our visitors that are worshiping with us, why don't you just jump on your feet so we can acknowledge you properly. Come on, St. James. Clap your hands for all. Any other visitors in the house? Amen. Mother... Amen. Mama, grandparents, my brother. St. James, just give them a great hand clap of welcome. We thank you so much for being a part of our worship. We pray that something would be said or done that would encourage you. Our swipers, our greeters are here. They're going to be able to help you to swipe around the room. Amen. Come on, greeters. Come on, come on. Amen. Give us some good giving music or something that uh, will help us. We don't have to walk. They're going to come to you. We in the same tune. I thought I just wanted to make sure. And ever, and ever, for all you've done for me, blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Yes, thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Oh, just one forever and ever and ever for all you done for for me. Blessings and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing. Oh, just want to praise you forever and ever. For all you done for, for me, all oh, blessings, they all belong to you. 
you, Jesus, for blessing. I better leave that alone. All had a chance to give. Let us look to God, eternal God, our Father. We thank you for the gift and the giver. We thank you for the seed and the sower. We pray now that you would return to us uh, tenfold, a hundredfold, God. Uh, bless us. Increase us is our prayer. For this we say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Come on, clap your hands for being able to give. Praise God, praise God, praise God. We are praying a special prayer. Amen. As you see, we have a, 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 a sit-in who is doing a fabulous job. Give Brother Amir. Give Brother Amir a great hand. Come on, y'all do better than that. Amen. Brother Seth is on the drums today. Say amen for him as well. Amen. Uh, James is out today, but that was a pre-arranged uh, pre thing where he was going to be absent today. And then we're praying for our musician, Brother Rashawn Keys, who is in the hospital today. Amen. And so we're praying that God would give him a speedy recovery. Amen. Come on, say amen for a speedy recovery. We pray now in the name of Jesus that healing is dispatched to him, that God would touch his kidneys, oh God, that God would restore, rejuvenate, oh God, refresh, heal like only you can. And for that, we say thank you. Not only heal him, God, but send him back to us. Uh, amen. Make him whole, oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we give God praise. Amen. Let's receive our singers, and then we're going right into the word of God. Come on, say amen for our singers as they come. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Y'all don't look like y'all happy today. Amen. Y'all don't know if y'all, y'all don't look like you love the Lord. Amen. People who love the Lord got a crazy look. Amen. Y'all got a special look. You know, uh, some of you have been in love, are in love. Uh, Y'all remember that fresh love? Amen. Before you had too many fights and disagreements. But that fresh love when you were kind of first figuring it out. And every time he showed up or she showed up, you get giddy. Y'all... Y'all remember that? You know, when they show up in the room, you get giddy. You start smiling and stuff. Amen. Well, tell somebody, act like you just fell in love with the Lord. And he just walked in the room. Well, sing us, sing, do best you can. Come on, let's magnify the name of the Lord in this place. Come on, we come to celebrate the mighty king, the great and mighty king. Come on, y'all can stand up on your feet. Come on. Come on, clap those hands like this. Hey. Let's celebrate our king. He's the ruler of everything. Let's lift his name on high. Come on, Zion. We praise our king. Come on. Let's celebrate. Set. Celebrate. He's the ruler of everything. Ruler of everything. Let's lift his name on high. Let's lift him Come on, make some noise in here. Oh, he's worthy of all praise. He's the Lord God in ancient of days. Let's lift his name on high. He's awesome and glorious, excellent King. He's righteous and glorious. So. Let's celebrate our King. He's the ruler of everything. Let's lift his name on high. Whoa. Oh, he's worthy of praise. Lord God in ancient days. Let's lift his name on high. Whoa. Yeah, he's awesome and glorious, excellent king, -da 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 -da. righteous and glorious, so. 
here we go. Righteous and glorious, ever victorious. He's reigning. He's a great God. Yes, righteous and glorious, ever victorious. He's reigning over us. He's a great God. Out of the same, the name of the Lord is great. I said, The name of the Lord is great. Yes, He's a great God. Can somebody help me say, Lift your hands and sing, lift your voice and proclaim. Oh, He's a great God. shall prosper. You are a great God. Yes, he is a great God. See, righteous and we us ever victorious. He's reigning over us. Come on, say. Lift your hands and proclaim it. We serve a great God. The good name of the Lord is great. Great is the Lord. And the food is there. Yes, you are a great, great, great God. Yeah, yeah, great, 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 great God. Hey, righteous and glorious, ever victorious. He's reigning over us. Everybody slap those hands. Great is the Lord you are. Mighty are you, Jesus. Woo. Holy are you, God. Mighty are your name. Woo. I can think of the Lord, oh God. And all that is done for me. My, 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 my soul. And Christ, I thank you, Jesus. For saving me, for healing my mind, oh Jesus. Thank you for turning my life around, God. Thank you for turning my life around, God. Thank you for turning my life around. I could have been dead sleeping in my grave, but God, you told that to behave. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He's a great God. Now clap those hands. Hey, everybody say, He's a great God. Let your voice and proclaim it. Shut it out, shut it out. He is a great God. Hey, righteous and glorious, ever sorry as he's reigning over us. Now, come on, you can give your God a great praise. He's a great God, so he deserves great praise. He's a great God. So he deserves great praise. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Keep it up, man. So Jesus, when we shine it away, I don't know about a We thank you, Jesus. Woo. We thank you for your power, Lord. You thank you for your grace and your mercy. Keep keeping me every day. Woo. Every, 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 every day.
at the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Hey, God, thank you, Jesus. Every tongue will confess. You are my God. You are my God. Oh, Lord. You are my God. Woo. And I thank you, Jesus. For every bullet that passed by me. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. You're great God, great God. Woo. How great is our God. <laughs> Sing with me. How great. I know this wasn't on it, but it's our God. If I would see how great. How great it is our God. You're the name. Above all names, and you are the earth, all of my praise, and my heart will sing how great is our God. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God Lord. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. You great God. Great and mighty on your name. Great and mighty on your name. For you're the name above all names. You, you are worthy of all praise. And our hearts, we will sing, we will cry, we will proclaim. We will declare, we will rejoice your name. We lift you up. It's our God. Now come on, you can give him glory right there.
For the Lord our God is. Come on, clap your hands right where you are. Come on, give him some glory. Come on, that's a good place to give him some praise. Come on, that's a good place to give him some praise. 
Come on, open up your mouth if he brought you through any trials. Come on and bless his name. Come on, somebody ought to give him some glory. Oh, yeah. Come on, if I couldn't say a word, I just wave my hand. Oh, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. God, religion. And I'm sad. Tis fair. How about you? God, religion. And I'm satisfied. This was Mama's verse. Wrap your arms around me. Anybody feel the power? Everywhere I go, come on, wave your hand. Wrap your arms around me. Ah, everywhere I go, I'm through here. It's the Lord's blessing. Tell us why you sitting in it right now. That we now. Enjoy, y'all ain't happy about it. Tell somebody, it's the Lord's blessing. Oh, that we now enjoy. The book of Acts chapter 2. Very quick. This will not even be a... This won't even be a sermonette, amen. Uh, yes, uh, I apologize if I don't get a chance to cross all the T's and dot all the I's, but hallelujah, there's something moving. Ooh. One for Jesus. I wouldn't have no friend. Anybody been left by some people? If it wasn't for Jesus, sure would have, sure would have, sure would have a friend. Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 1, uh, verse 1 and 2. Y'all messed me up so bad I can't preach what I want to preach. So I think I better preach what fits where y'all are. Amen. Acts chapter 2. And when, verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Somebody say fully come. Amen. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. Look at somebody and say, I hear something. Sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. I want to talk very quickly from the subject. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Come on, look at somebody and say, a neighbor, thank God. For the Holy Ghost. <laughs> oh, it'll keep you. It'll keep you. It'll keep you. Thank God for the presence of his Holy Ghost, his spirit. Certainly over the last uh, year, uh, year plus, um, we have become accustomed. <laughs> we have become accustomed. We have gotten used to. Um, let before I give you revelation of where I'm going. Uh, some of us have complained that uh, it was not all that it should have been, nor was it all that it could have been. Uh, but we were somewhat thankful for what it was, uh, and not just us here in. 
the United States of America, but across this country, uh, different countries due to the pandemic, uh, gave some type of aid, uh, some type of assistance. Uh, let me break it down to you so y'all can say amen. Some type of stimulus. Uh, that's all that, yeah, y'all, somebody say amen, you know. Some of y'all right now sitting in this room know when the next one is coming, if it's coming, how it's coming, and how much it's going to be. And some of us didn't care if it was by check, by direct deposit, whether it was added, uh, child care money to, to buy some groceries, whatever kind of aid, support, help that you could receive. Uh, amen. Some of us didn't do enough. Some of us did too much. Y'all going to say amen. That type of support, if you're not careful, will not really help you. Uh, some of us are so frivolous in our mindset that we misuse help. Now, y'all come on say amen because I got some ribs to eat. Amen. I ain't got time to mess around with y'all. Links are being prepared now. I got to get out of here. It's dangerous to misuse help. And many of us, we, we do it constantly because what was meant to stimulate us or to support us, we spend on frivolous things. Oh, people ain't happy with me now. You know, the stimulus was uh, interpreted or meant to help you to pay some bills. You know, keep your economy in your home stabilized. Now, some of y'all say they knew $1,400 wasn't going to really stabilize. You know, I spend more than that in a week. Uh, you highfalutin people. But that was designed of the stimulus was to help you to do some things that because your income was short that you could not do on your own. I don't think it was designed to buy new sneakers. They got quiet. Just look at somebody. I'm going to leave that alone. Tell somebody, don't mistreat help. Uh, uh, that help, that support that the government gave was only a temporary support. Uh, listen, if you really be honest about it, it was kind of a one or possibly two-term thing that really, if you were not really mindful, would really mess you up. Uh, I learned very early in my working career, and then I'm going to get to the text, I'll never forget, I was working for this freight company, and um, they had us working overtime on a long period of basis, Reggie, and, and uh, after a while, my brother-in-law, he said something to me. He's a funny guy, but he said something to me that stuck with me. I got my first three or four overtime checks, and I thought I was balling shot calling, you know. You know, I was, I was you know, normally where I'd bring me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and some chips and a, you know, juice box for lunch. I was like, no, I'm going to the restaurant. I was eating out, and I was buying lunch from the restaurant every day. And after a few weeks of doing this, he said, now, brother, I want to tell you something. And you do with it what you want. He said, don't start living on your overtime. I'm almost there. Uh, look at somebody and say, neighbor, you mess up. Uh, when you start living off of your overtime. Uncle Sam understands this better than you do because that's why he taxed you so much when you make it. Anybody ever worked overtime and it seemed like they take more taxes out of your overtime than they do your regular time because he doesn't trust you to be honest. And so look at somebody next to you and say, neighbor, don't ever live. Don't start making life decisions on overtime. Simply because overtime is no guarantee. It can... It can last for six months and without reason, without cause, without preparation, it can be cut off and you're back to 40 hours a week and you have made all of these extravagant life changes based upon overtime that is not promised. 
Y'all ain't going to say amen, so let me go on and get to it. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, don't you mess around. I wish I had some parents that could look at your children and give them a prophetic word on their future and say, now, child, whatever you do, don't, don't make the mistake of budgeting your overtime, living off of the extra in your life. So I promise it can be cut off. So with stimulus and overtime, they are temporary. But I got something for you today. That won't ever cut out. It won't ever be cut off. It won't ever be scaled back. It comes from a greater source than the government. He knows. Oh, glory be to God. I'm fighting tears up here. Is there anybody grateful that God knows? What we gonna need before we need it. He knew we were gonna be in some trouble. He knew that sin would take us to a place that we could not recover from. He knew from the moment he shaped Adam out of the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils uh, and man became a living soul. He knew. He knew what Adam would do. He knew the effect that it would have on humanity. And sisters, don't y'all sit there like you're exempt. He knew what Eve was going to do before she did. He knew the effect of what Eve would do would have on Adam. So he said, I got to put something in place. He, let, let, me, let me see if I, can, if I can work here for two minutes, then I'll go and close this thing. Uh, uh, look at somebody and say, God too has a stimulus package. Tell somebody, God too has a stimulus package. Be quiet, yes, sir. Be ready. Be loose. There you go. Y'all slap back just a little bit. Be right there. Man's stimulus package has gaps in it. I'm trying to see who I'm preaching to up in here. Because I ain't wasting this oil. I ain't wasting this oil on vessels. I, let, I ain't wasting this wine on vessels with holes in it. Tell somebody, you got to be fresh to get this. Because the Bible said, what man puts new wine in old skins? That's the biblical terms. He said, old skins are worn, and the acidity of the wine will cause them to bust. And so, I ain't trying to bust you. I'm trying to bless you. Cut my house up, son. Look at somebody say, I wonder, are you new skin? Ah, y'all ain't said nothing. Look at somebody say, neighbor, have you been made over? Donovan keeps saying, be flexible, he said, be flexible. <laughs> Man's stimulus package had gaps in it. You might have got the first 700. Some of you got it, some of you didn't. <laughs> you was mad if you didn't get it. <laughs> it ain't the government fault you ain't filed taxes in 10 years. They don't know you around. They couldn't see you nothing because they didn't know you existed. <laughs> You're like, I, did. <laughs> so, I wouldn't say the rest of it, but I'm going to be quiet. Amen. <laughs> Shut up, Dixon. Hush. <laughs> I ain't never told nobody to hush on the live. I'm sorry. Amen. Sorry, producer. And I'm through. You might have gotten the first 700. Even if you did get it, there was a gap. I, I like how you're side preaching, so let me go back. Everybody didn't get the 700 at the same time. Some got it early. Some got it a little bit later. But if you were going to get it, eventually you got it. But even when you got it, 
there was some space between the 1400. To some of you, that space was long. If they don't hurry up too long, it ain't take, it ain't take them this long. How, but how long they gonna wait to send it? It's coming. And even, I gotta hurry up, when you got the 1400, there is still some space between anything else. I ain't gonna talk about PPAs and PPAs and SBAs and what do they call them? PPGs? PPPs? And I ain't, I ain't even Come on, I, ain't, I don't know nothing. What y'all looking at me for? <laughs> you ain't give me nothing. Didn't ask me if I wanted nothing. So I don't know nothing. No, no. Some of y'all getting uptight. <laughs> SBA, PPPs, PPGJs, whatever they were. Whatever. I don't even know the terms of it. You know, that was the space. And sometimes in the space, despair kicked in. And God and man stimulus. There is always space to consider, to hit despair or depression. Thank you. Thank you. But God's stimulus. He doesn't leave gaps. From God... To Christ, to what we're talking about in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost. They are linked in partnership. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. If I had time, which I really don't because ribs are cooking, I would, I would, I would love. <laughs> I'd love to talk about this. This. You know, even though between Malachi and Matthew, there is thousands of, hundreds of years until the coming of the Christ. But he left us his word in some degree to get us to this point. And even when Jesus arrives on the scene, he is the living word. But his job was even greater to be the savior of the world. Is there anybody here grateful that he saved you? Come on, do better than that. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, I thank God for salvation. Turn that for me, Jimmy. Come on, look at somebody down your road and say, neighbor, thank God he saved me. Anybody here glad that he died? But, oh, don't do that. Tell somebody, but you can, but don't do it too much. Look at somebody say, but before he died, thank God he did some living. He he showed me how to walk. He showed me how to carry myself. He showed me how to call those things that are not. You ought to look at somebody and say, neighbor, there is power, hey God, of life and death in the tongue. Now, see, that's what's wrong with the modern church. We, we done lost our language. I feel a shift in the spirit. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you do, don't lose your spiritual language. The old folk would teach us how to he by my see. Hey, hey, hey. Glory, glory, glory. But we educated now. We sophisticated now. We sit with our legs crossed. Uh -huh. We sit comfortable. Uh -huh. But tell somebody, you can't get blessed uh -huh. being comfortable. Uh -huh. You got to get on the edge of your seat. Uh -huh. You got to have a e ba ba uh -huh. uh, Hey, hey, hey. Uh -huh. Oh, Carolyn, you know about it. Uh -huh. Hey, uh, hey, hey, hey. Uh -huh. You got to have, y'all ain't even practicing. Uh -huh. Look at somebody say, glory, glory. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hey, what's going on here? Uh -huh. uh, you ought to look at Somebody say, what's going on here? There's something shifting in the atmosphere. Ah, anybody here? Look at a neighbor and say, glory, glory. Ah, you done got sophisticated. But sophistication didn't get you through COVID. Sophistication didn't bring you through a pandemic. It was by the Lord's mercies that we were not consumed. Somebody ought to wrap back and say, hey, hey, hey. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all. Oh, 
all that he's done for me. My soul. Y'all ain't got no soul in here. My soul cries out. Hallelujah. If you ain't got nothing else, you ought to say hallelujah. Sit down for me. Let me finish this. Acts chapter 2. In God's stimulus crystal, this part became critical. I know you got it. Hallelujah, God. What time you got to go? Hallelujah. Good. I don't want to make you miss. In this space here, from the time of his death, his resurrection, which means he got, oh, I ain't got time to stay there, but somebody holler, he got up. Yeah, you ought to holler. Come on, don't play with it. Come on, holler. He got up. Tell somebody, he got up. There you go. Don't play with it. Tell somebody, ain't no grave going to hold my body down. Y'all look at somebody and say, if you miss my home going. Tell them, don't worry about me. Tell them, don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. Tell me, I'll be somewhere from his birth, life, death, and resurrection. You do know he got up. And the Bible says that he showed himself for 40 days beyond infallible proofs. What that means is he let people touch him. He ate with folk. He let them put their hands on him to prove that beyond any of a shadow of a doubt, he was not a ghost. He was not a myth. He, because ghosts don't eat. Y'all remember Thomas missed the meeting. And Thomas said, unless I put my hand in the hole in his hand, unless I put my hand in the hole in his side, I will never believe. And the Bible said that Jesus showed up in a room behind closed doors. Meaning he walked in a room without opening a window or a door. He appeared in the room and said, hey Thomas, I heard you want to touch me. He said to Thomas, here's my hands. Thomas said, I'm cool. I'm straight. You ain't got to do all that. I don't know how you got up in here, but you're up in here and you want me to touch you. I'm straight. Forget what I said. I know y'all tired of holding arms, but just stay there. So from his birth, life, death, and resurrection, and showing himself, Beyond infallible proofs, he tarried, hung around, because he didn't want his package to have a gap in it. Let loose, and I'm through. Loose. God's plan is like a relay race. And I'm through. I know I'm messing up the presentation, but I had to do what God told me to do. God started it. And Jesus couldn't move forward. Don't move, just put your hand back. Not both, just one. Until God passed him the baton. <laughs> when God handed the baton, Jesus took off running. Don't move too fast. And the Holy Ghost could not kick in until he received permission from Jesus to say, I've run my leg. Now you run your leg. But hold that. I need 21 of you in the room that got some Holy Ghost and say, well, who going to run the finish? Yeah. Tell somebody, who going to do the final leg? Y'all ain't asking nobody with no power. Say, neighbor, who going to do the final leg? And they were all. 
in one place on one accord minding the same things and all of a sudden there came a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind and got on Look at the neighbor and say, neighbor, I hear something going on in the room. Ain't God all right. Who's going to run the final leg of the race? Ain't God all right. The Holy Ghost came to give me power to run the final leg. Ain't God all right. Right. Let's ride here, y'all. High five somebody and say, neighbor, it's time for you to run the race that is set before you. Ain't got all right. Wave at a neighbor and say, neighbor, what you're waiting on is your time to run. It's your time to move forward. Ain't got all right, high five a neighbor and say, neighbor, I never would have made it had it not been for the Holy Ghost that was on my side. Ain't God all right? Wave at another neighbor and say, neighbor, he gave me power to endure the hell I've been through. I ain't, I ain't got no nobody that feel like I feel but I testify for my own self a few years ago I lost my dear mother I thought my world would never be the same but when she left I felt a quickening in my spirit it was the power of the Holy Ghost that helped me to keep my mind it was a power of the Holy Ghost that mended my heart ain't got all right I'm closing here but do me one last one last favor throw your arm oh come on slip your arm place your arm touch somebody on the shoulder and say neighbor God got a stimulus package God got a plan for you tell him he may not come when you y'all ain't touching him hard make a contact say neighbor oh neighbor oh neighbor oh neighbor be not just a man whatever betide you look him in the eye and say God God will y'all ain't talking tell him God will y'all ain't testifying say God will look back at him and say how do you know how do you know how do you know that God will take care of you look him in the eye 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 and say I tried him for myself is there anybody here a son of a witness that can say I tried him yes I did I tried him for myself those are church open look at somebody say neighbor thank God for the precious gift of his Holy Spirit. Tell somebody, thank God. Look at somebody, I say, I thank God for the precious gift of his Holy Spirit. You know, let me share this historically with you.
so that you don't think I'm just preaching out of my emotions. The day of Pentecost is exactly 50 days after resurrection or Easter Sunday. It is 50 days, which declares the outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon his church. When Jesus ascended back into heaven, he gave one mandate. I ain't got no Bible reading. Tell somebody when he left. You know, some of you leave town and you give your children a list. Do this, do that, take the garbage can out, make sure you don't have nobody in my house, don't tell my house, clean my house clean. Hey Amen, don't you go nowhere, da 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 da. You, come on, when you leave, you got a whole list of instructions. Here was the Christ leaving time, headed back to eternity. And he only left one mandate. Some of y'all look like, what is it? Y'all don't, who know? Okay, I guess I'm about to go to work on Bible study. We got to come back in session. He left one mandate. He told his disciples one thing. Tarry here and wait in Jerusalem until you receive the gift, the power of the Holy Ghost. Don't, don't do nothing. Just wait right here until the Holy Ghost comes. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. You shall receive and what he was saying to them, without Jesus and without power, you're going to be vulnerable. The disciples disobeyed his command because they did one thing while they were waiting. They tried to fill an empty spot. You do know that Judas had hung himself. And they said, well, while we wait, we might as well fill Judas's spot. And the Bible said they cast lots between two individuals. I think his name was Justice and Matthias. They said, let's draw straws and see who's going to replace Judas. We might as well be whole when he comes. If you go on the Bible, you'll never read anything where the chosen one did anything biblical. Because he was chosen without power. I'm finna meddle now. That's why your marriage didn't work. You picked him or her without power. You picked out of the flesh and not out of your spirit. And because you picked out of your flesh and not out of your spirit, you're having a hard time making it work. Because anything you do without, look at people getting mad at me. <laughs> I'm just telling you. That's why that job won't work, because you chose it without power. That's why that car note is killing you, because you made the decision without power. You bought with your eyes, not with your spirit. When you buy out of your spirit, God will make the increase and the difference. That's why the house is falling apart, because you didn't buy it with power. But look at somebody and say, neighbor, we serve a God who is able to do exceedingly. Last thing, tell them, don't you do anything without power. 50 days they had to wait for the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost came, what happened? They spoke in tongues and they spilled out into the streets. And many heard them. They were able to preach and add to the church daily as God gave them utterance. Tell somebody, don't you mess up while you're waiting for the Spirit. Anybody in the room need Jesus? This is what I heard in my spirit this morning. We going out with this. We done. Amen. Facebook, we love you. Thank God we did what we wanted to do. Oh, anybody want to join church? I'll say, I'm sorry, I'm kicking Facebook out. I, I want to, yeah, go with it right now. I just want to, I want to tell somebody. And uh, all in the room saved and saved, got a church on. Just lift your hands one more time. Thank you so much. All right. Praise God. Clap your hands for salvation. Look at somebody tell me, we're going out on a high note. Tell somebody, so if you want to go on a high note, you better help us get with it. Amen.
We'll see you Wednesday night in our Bible study at 730 to 8 o'clock. Amen. Virtually we'll be there. Soon we will be back in this building on Wednesday night. We're just waiting for God to give us the clearance to do so. And so this Wednesday, amen. Communion, yeah, we're going to do communion too, but we'll do communion off the grid. We're going to let y'all take that and go. Amen. Amen. I want to I want to leave out on a praise. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to light some fireworks, y'all. Are y'all ready? Y'all look suspect. Don't make me look bad. Y'all ain't ready? Get out. Forget it. Come on, David. I'm, just, I'm not saying get out like that, but I thank you. I didn't give y'all no book. No, you ain't got to try. Amen. Amen. Don't try. Amen. Come on, y'all do the Lord's Supper for us. Pull the table. They scared. <laughs> they scared, Shaw. I don't like it. I'm about to get with them. I don't like scared. I heard God saying, um, who has the final say? Tells my Jehovah. Uh, Stefan keyed into it in my spirit when he kept saying, Jehovah, who has the final say? Tell him, Jehovah has the final say. But the, the spark, Brother Gates, that was getting my spirit is when they kept saying in the vamp, I have no reason to fear. That's, a, that's all I kept hearing. I have no reason to fear. I have no reason to fear. The Lord is my life. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Come on, y'all, sing it with us. They who Thank has you. the final say. Yeah. Jehovah. And no matter what my money says, Jehovah has the final say. And no matter what. Come on, y'all, help us. Say, yeah. Jehovah has. Here we go. Here